Hello everyone, welcome to video 6 of chapter 6. In this video we start chapter 6.4 where we will learn another algorithm to solve the integer linear programming problem. The name of the algorithm is called a branch and bond algorithm. So here is a brief outline. It takes a couple of steps. So now we are given an integer linear programming problem. We call it ILP. So step A, the first step, we would solve the linear programming problem neglecting the integral constraint. So this we know how to do. If by chance the optimal solution is integral, then we're done. Otherwise, we move to the next step. Um, then we would create two distinct problem, okay? each by adding a new constraint. So we would form two new constraints, distinct, completely exclusive of each other. And then we make two new problems, and the problems will be generated from the non-integral optimal solution in the previous step. And the details on how to do that will be explained soon. Okay, and then you solve these two um, linear programming problem, and then repeat the process as needed. Okay, so there are details in this algorithm might not be so clear at this point, and we will go through an example, we'll explain that. And in the example, we will solve the regular linear programming problem using the applet and LP assistant. So I encourage the students to fill in the details with the LP assistant to verify if uh, everything I said was right. Okay, so here is our problem, I, ILP, um, minimize the objective function subject to two constraints and the variables are restricted and integral. Okay, so let's follow the um, outline of the algorithm. So this takes several levels of uh, branching out. So level one, let's solve the, the um, LP problem, meaning we neglect the integral constraint, we solve this linear programming in the LP assistant. And this is what we get. So we call this problem P1 at level one. So the minimum of Z is uh, negative three and three quarter, and this is X1, and this is X2, the optimal value. And we see that these are not integral. So we're not done yet. And also we see that the minimum of Z is this value. So that means so this is without the constraint of integral. So that means if this constraint shall be put on, then um, the minimum value would be at least bigger than negative three. Okay. Now level two, now we will form two new problems. So how do you form two new problems? You could look at the optimal solution at the previous uh, level and pick the one that does not have an integral solution. So here, both x1 and x2 are not integers. We could pick any of them randomly. So let's say we picked x1. And then how do I form the constraint? So x1 now is 1 and... Uh, a quarter. So this is a number between the two integers 1 and 2. So here's how you form the constraint. You form a subproblem 2a by adding an additional constraint x1 less than 1, the smaller integer. And then the other problem by requiring x1 to be bigger than 2, the bigger integer. So uh, this x1 will lie between 1 and 2. Okay? And then we see that these two constraints are exclusive of each other. The intersection of these two sets is empty. 
Okay, and then we can solve um, the two problems, P2A, problem 2A, and problem 2B using LP Assistant, okay? And uh, here's what the LP Assistant give us. For 2A, the minimum of Z is negative 3 and a half. So at x1 is 1, x2 is 2 and quarter. And the second one, the minimum is 0, and uh, x1 is 2, x2 is 1. So let's make some discussion about this, these two solutions. So let's look at the 2a. 2a says, um, with that additional constraint, we have a z min that's negative 3 and a half. And we see that this one is uh, larger than the z min we obtained at p1. That's quite reasonable because we put more constraint and the feasible region shrinks and then the minimum value becomes larger. Okay. And uh, the solution here is not integral, so this needs to be further branched out. About the solution for 2b, we see that we have integral solutions, or zeta integers. And uh, the minimum at this solution is uh, 0. So we don't know if this is the final optimal solution or not. It's an intermediate step, meaning if x1 is 2, x2 is 1, the the minimum of z, the z value right there is zero. So that tells us that we actually um, have found an upper bound for the um, optimal value of the final ILP problem. So it should be bounded by zero from above. Okay, so we would conclude now for the integer LP problem, the z mean should lie between negative three and zero. Okay, negative 3 is obtained at level 1, and this 0 upper bound is obtained here at level 2. Okay, so it would be useful to draw a diagram. Right now, it's just a diagram in progress. So what I listed here is, at the top of the diagram, this is the solution of the initial problem by neglecting the integral constraint. And that's the solution. So P1, I, re I repeated the solution. And since this is not integral, so we branch out by having two branches, one to the left, one to the right. And then with the exclusive uh, um, additional constraint, x1 is less than 1 here, x1 is bigger than 2. Then I have two, two problems, 2a and 2b. And then I record the solution Okay, these are summaries from the previous page. Okay, now we see this is already integral, and this solution is not, and we have not concluded um, the optimal value yet. So now we go to level 3. We will pick this one to further branch out. So here the two solutions, x1 is integral, so x2 is the only one that's not integral. So we will put two um, constraints, and x2 lies between 2 and 3. So one constraint will be x2 less than or equal to 2, and the second one is x2 bigger than or equal to 3. Okay, and that we call problem 3a, and here we call 3b. Okay, and uh, we can send those two problems in LP Assistant, and... Uh, solve them. Okay, so here I put the result now in this diagram so we can keep track. So this was from um, level 2, so level 1, level 2, and now I branch out to level 3. Here I add one branch additional constraint and then the second branch additional constraint. So if we solve this one by adding on this constraint and we found out that the problem is not feasible, okay? And then for the left one, x2 less than or equal to 2, when we solve and we find a solution. The z min is 
this you see it's further a bit smaller and x1 is 3 fourths x2 is 2 and we see that this is still not integral so um, we would need to branch out further from problem 3a okay and now we um, are at level 4 we will branch out from this one taking x1 and we see that x1 now is a number between 0 and 1. Mm -hmm. So the two constraints would be the first one is uh, less than or equal to 0. But then since x1 should also be bigger than or equal to 0, then this becomes x1 is 0. And then the second part um, is uh, x1 is bigger than 1, this constraint. And then you can see that, okay, you can impose that, but you can recall this is a problem coming from this branch. So earlier there was already a constraint x1 is less than 1. So effectively this is actually forcing x1 to be 1. Okay, we'll see that also in the solution. Okay, so we send those two in LP assistant and we solve them. And then we add it to the diagram level 1, level 2, level 3, and now level 4. So x1 is 0, gives me this solution. And then x1 is bigger than 1, actually is equal to 1, gives me this solution. So here this solution is still not integral, and this one is an inter integral solution. So x1 is 1, x2 is 2, and the minimum is negative 3. So recall that, um, and after step two, we have an upper and lower bound for the minimum of z, which shall be between negative three and zero. Okay, and then we find one is exactly negative three. So we can stop here because we know that is the optimal solution. Okay, so quite some work, but uh, you see this algorithm works for this problem and uh, we find the solution okay so um we'll take another example in the next video so i hope you enjoyed this one i'll see you next time